It's been a little more than 10 years since the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. The fifth anniversary of the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High in Parkland, Florida is next week, and a gunman opened fire inside Robb Elementary down in Uvalde, Texas last May. These are the three deadliest K through 12 school shootings in the history of our nation. Again, all in about the last decade. Tonight, in the first of a two part 12 investigate series securing the triad schools, we show you what local districts are doing in response to incidents like these to try to keep our children safe. Unfortunately, what we have seen in the last couple of years is gunshot becoming the number one cause of injury death for children, surpassing car accidents. That is unacceptable. According to the CDC, more than 3,200 people age 1 to 18 died from a firearm in the year 2020. In the same year, just under 2,900 died in car crashes. Of course, not all of these deaths are the result of guns in schools, but most parents would agree even one weapon on campus in the wrong hands is one too many. Governor Roy Cooper has vowed to work with the General Assembly to make schools safer, and schools in our state are already taking action. Our National Investigative Unit reached out to every public school district in all 50 states. Among those that responded in North Carolina, 100% have an active shooter response plan and use school resource officers. 77% expected to launch new safety initiatives this school year. However, 35% said they have classrooms that cannot be locked from the inside. 29% admitted they had not briefed all staff members about their local law enforcement's active shooter response plan. And 23% said the district has at least one firearm on school campus that is not physically worn at all times by a law enforcement officer. We took it a step further, asking all 19 triad public school districts specifically what they've done recently to improve security. A new tool in Guilford County made big news just last month. A scanner detected a loaded gun at a triad high school. The gun was inside a student's backpack at Ragsdale High School in Jamestown. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office says the student tried to enter the building when the scanner triggered an alert. Captain Brian Hall oversees the 14 SROs that are in the middle and high schools throughout the county. Is it possible the scanner stopped a deadly school shooting that day? Yeah, I'm quite certain it at least kept it from uh, having the possibility of it. Uh, you know, nothing has at this point led us to believe that that student intended to do anyone any harm that day. But, um, you know, anytime you introduce a weapon at campus, there's always that possibility. So, yeah, we're, we're very, very thankful that the scanners did their job that day. In Stokes County, they've added something low tech but heavy duty. These intruder stops are inside every office and classroom in every school in the district. Normally when you have a lockdown, a teacher would have to come to a door, fish through and find which key is available um, that works the door to lock it. And then if you turn it the wrong way in a stressful situation, then you would have to turn and lock it. And while that didn't take a lot of time, it did take several seconds. The intruder stop system, even if you have an unlocked door, if somebody calls a lockdown, all you have to do is shut the door and tap it down. In the Alamance Burlington school system, there either is or will soon be a safety vestibule at every school. This one at Marvin B. Smith Elementary in Burlington is about 600 square feet. It's just an added layer of protection. It's another few seconds, if you will. Uh, and about 95% of the people who come through those doors never get past uh, the door that would take them into the actual learning part of the school. In Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, at places like Glen High School in Kernersville, where there are multiple buildings on one campus, there's a way for students and staff, but no one else, to buzz themselves in with a code or a badge. They've also added new multi-lens security cameras with remote access, so district leaders and, if necessary, emergency responders can see what's happening on any campus. We have somewhere around Somewhere around 2,500 cameras across the district right now as part of that 2016 bond. And elementary, middle, and high. Elementary, middle, and high. But within that 2,500, we have almost 4,500 views. So we can see almost anything that's happening on our campuses at any given uh, time of the day, depending on what we need to see. Different districts, different needs, different approaches, but ultimately the same problem. Everybody needs to understand they have a role in it. It's not just a school problem or just a law enforcement problem. It's an everyone problem. 
In our next half hour, part two of our series, Securing the Triad Schools, will show you what else local districts would like to be able to do, the challenges that exist, and what one national security expert says so many districts get wrong.